Now we're given then that f of x equals 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 6. And we're told that if we divide f of x by 2x minus 1, there's a remainder of minus 5. And if we divide it by x plus 2, there's a remainder of 0. So we're asked to find a and b. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we need to be able to remember is something called the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. And if you're not familiar with that, then here's the remainder theorem for you. That is that if f of x is divided by ax minus b, then the remainder is equal to f of b over a. So if you compare ax minus b to 2x minus 1, the a is the 2 and the b is the 1. So what they're saying here is that if we divide by 2x minus 1, then f, let's just put this down, then f of b over a, b being 1 over a, a being 2, f of a half equals that remainder minus 5. And with this, we can create an equation. We can substitute x equals a half into here now and equate it to minus 5. Let's do that. What we've got then is 2 times x cubed. x is the half, so half cubed. Remember, it's all cubed. Plus a times a half squared. Plus b times a half minus the 6 equals the remainder minus 5. Now if you work this out, what you'll find that you get is a quarter for this term. And then you're going to get a quarter a here. And then a half b, so plus a half b. And then minus 6 equals minus 5. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of these fractions, the 4, the 4 and the 2, these denominators here. So what I'm going to do is multiply through by 4. So if I multiply through by 4, we get 1 here, plus 1a, or just simply a. And then we get 2b here, and 6 4 is 24. And here, minus 5 times 4 is minus 20. And then, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to make a plus 2b uh, the subject on the left-hand side, so we'll put that down, a plus 2b there equals, we've got 1 minus 24, which is minus 23, and if I add 23 to both sides now, I get equals 3. So I've got two unknowns, a and a b here, in one equation. I can't solve it, I need another equation. So we're going to be using simultaneous equations in a moment, so I'll just call that 1. What else are we told? We're told that if f of x is divided by x plus 2, the remainder is 0. So what we could use is this theorem still. If the remainder is 0, then we have got essentially f of minus 2 equals 0. Because the a is a 1, the b is going to be minus 2. So we have f of minus 2 over 1, f of minus 2. Or you might like to think of another theorem. It's called the factor theorem. The factor theorem says this, that if f of p equals 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. So if we're told that x plus 2 leaves the remainder 0, we know that x plus 2 is a factor. So you can see that the p here, we are adding negative 2. So f of negative 2 should give 0. So let's just put this down here. We also have okay, that f of minus 2 equals 0. So we do exactly what we did before, that is put x as now minus 2 and equate it to 0. So therefore what we've got is 2 times minus 2 all cubed, plus a times minus 2 all squared, plus b times minus 2, 
minus 6 equals 0. So if we work out each term, this term comes to minus 16. Then we have 4a here, so plus 4a. Then minus 2b. And then minus 6 equals 0. And minus 16 minus another 6 is minus 22. So I could add 22 to both sides. And I therefore have 4a minus 2b equals 22. Noticing that I've got a 2b up here, a plus 2b and a minus 2b here, I don't think I really want to change this any further. I mean, I could divide through by 2 if you like and get 2a minus b equals 11. But I don't want to do that, OK? I think it's going to be a lot easier if we just leave it like that. So I'll number it 2. Now, it's up to you how you solve these equations, these simultaneous equations. But because I've got a plus 2b here and a minus 2b here, I'm going to add the two equations. I'm going to say that 1 plus 2 gives. What does it give us? Well, essentially, we have a plus 4a, which is 5a. And then 2b added to minus 2b, well, that gives 0. So I won't bother with that. And then we have 3 plus the 22 is 25. So 5a equals 25. And if I divide both sides by 5, I end up with a equaling 25 divided by 5, which is 5. So all I need to do now is just simply substitute a equals 5 into either equation 1 or 2. I'm going to uh, pick equation 1, so sub a equals 5 into 1. And what have we got? Well, we've got 5 plus 2b equals 3. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I get 2b equals 3 minus 5, which is minus 2. And then divide both sides by 2, and you end up with b equaling minus 1. So, essentially, we have a equals 5 then, and b equals minus 1. Alright, so, hope you've been able to follow that, and that brings us now to the end of this part of the question.